Hi, I'm Brian from Simply Brian Enterprises and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a fun little topic, the mess of resistors. Let's flip over. So if you start playing with this hobby for a while of doing Raspberry Pi or Arduino, you're going to start accumulating kits and, you mul and uh, bulk packs and things that come with a myriad of resistors. And over time these become a problem because I've got this pile of multiple values they kind of stick together. It's, it's tough to have a box of these or a, a compartment of these and sort through them and find the value you want quickly. So I've gone through a few iterations of trying to figure out this problem, and I think I have a solution. The first thing we need to do is understand how resistors are valued, how they're numbered. There is a standard called the E24 standard, which most of the resistors that you're going to buy at the electronic stores and so forth are going to follow. And these are values, as you can see, from 100 to 910 or 910 ohms. And then they're multiplied times 1, times 10, times 100, times 1K. So for instance, you will find, as you start to play with these, you'll find a 220 ohm resistor, which is very common for LED projects. You will find a 4.7K which is very useful for voltage dividers. And you'll find a 10,000, which is good for mainly pull up and pull down resistors. And of course, all the values in between. And so knowing this helps us to devise an organization system to find things a little bit easier. And what I've come up with is a very specific plastic box. This is made by a company, I believe it's pronounced Darice, D-A-R-I-C-E. It's the My Boutique Organizer Elite Series, and notice it has 32 compartments. I like that it has 32 compartments because we're going to do a little math here, and you'll see exactly how I can lay these out so I can find my resistors. So I'm going to grab my resistor box that I've already started sorting. And I'm going to very carefully open the lid as not to spill the resistors everywhere. And you'll see what I've got is I've got them separated into rows and columns. The rows are by E24 values. Now, 32 compartments means I have eight rows and four columns. So I have my E24 values, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, all the way up to 91. So this first row is a multiplier of 1. My second row is a multiplier of 10. This gets me into the hundreds. My third row is, in, is a multiplier of 100. That gets me into the thousands. My fourth row is a, a multiplier of 1,000, which gets me into my 10 thousands, all the way up to, you can't see it here, try to get this on camera, all the way up to 91,000. Then what I do is I have two separate boxes. This is my first box because I'm still in the midst of sorting. And on the end, if you can see that, I've got it labeled so that when it's sitting on my shelf, I see that I've got 10 ohm through 91k ohm. Now for 90 plus percent of my hobbyist projects, the resistors I'm gonna need are gonna be in this box because the next box will go up into um, from 100K up to several mega ohm. And when you start to get up to that level, those resistors aren't particularly useful for hobbyist projects. You have to have something a little more specific that you're working on for that. So the next question is, how do we deal with the rat's nest? How do we deal with these resistors with the long leads that are kind of all stuck together? And I did a little research and I found out that it's actually commonplace among hobbyists to trim the leads on their resistors. And so when you first get a pack of resistors, it usually comes like this. It's usually taped together. Um, this is called a tape reel when they have them taped together like this. So they have uh, these reels of just hundreds of thousands of these resistors off. They clip off however many the customer ordered, throw them in the box and send them out the door. So when you buy an Arduino kit, you're probably used to seeing something like this because it came off of a much bigger reel. In this case, it was, looks like there were eight of them in this package, clipped off because I borrowed one. So there's seven here, but there were eight. And they clip it off, throw it in the kit, send it out the door. 
Now, if we go onto our breadboard, I'm going to actually steal one here. I'm not going to take one off the tape. Um, I'm just going to put this resistor on the breadboard. And what we see, look how high that sits off of there. If we start to add in multiples, that starts to become a problem because we start to stack them up next to each other and we run the risk of actually the leads crossing over. So what we do to remedy that is we trim the leads down. Now I could not find, this is not showing up very well. Try that, that's a lot better. I could not find a definitive answer of what people like to use for a lead length. Um, so through some experimentation, I discovered that in my case, I like 15 millimeters. So this is 15 millimeters or one and a half centimeters. So I just take my metric ruler, measure out 15 millimeters and clip it with my little pair of clippers. I just clip the end of it, flip it around, clip the end of it. I don't have my ruler handy, so I'm not going to do one on camera here, but you get the idea. So these are... These leads are now 15 millimeters, and now I'm going to bend it over like that. And I'm going to bring back my breadboard here. And notice how much, if, <laughs> if I can get the lead in here, there. Notice the difference. You know, I'll try to turn this. Notice the difference in height. Notice how much cleaner that looks to have these leads trimmed down like that. But it's not just how they work on the breadboard. Look at my pile of cleaned resistors versus my pile of uncleaned resistors. Not only do these take up less space, not only are these easier to sort through, but one thing you'll notice when you start to accumulate resistors like these, when you pull this tape off, it leaves residue on the resistor leads, which makes this worse because it's not just that they're long and they're intertwined, there's actually a little bit of tape residue on here and these are sticking together. So if I've got a box and I'm looking for a particular uh, value of resistor, I'm going to have a really tough time because I'm digging through a box of sticky leads that are sticking together. And now all I'm going to do um, is now I've got my trimmed set of resistors and I'm just going to start picking them up one by one, start reading the color bands and placing them in the box that I just showed you where they go. Now, if you're over 40, you're going to want to pay attention to this. This is a lighted magnifier. This is the best way to read color bands. When you're getting up there in years and your eyes aren't so good, you young bucks, you go right ahead and stare at them with your own eyes. For those of us of an older generation, we need a little bit of help. So. I highly recommend running out and picking up one of these little uh, LED lighted magnifiers. This one uh, actually came from uh, Lifeway bookstores when they were going under and selling everything dirt cheap. I picked up a bunch of these. Love having these uh, in my various uh, packages for uh, my hobby, my hobby work and so forth. Great to have. I highly recommend picking yourself up a lighted magnifier. Good set of dikes. Metric ruler. And of course, the plastic case. I'm going to actually put a link down below uh, describing the case because it is my favorite. It is the one that I've found that works best. And that is that concludes our session on resistor madness. I hope you've enjoyed this. Talk to you next time. Take care.